Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my Nest JS Advanced course and uh, I will be covering all the remaining content of this uh, Nest JS Advanced course. Currently we are just talking about uh, some of the techniques like caching techniques, versioning, serialization, how we can do the task scheduling, how we can use uh, event emitter, how we can just do a file upload, download, how we can do the streaming of file which you are downloading from S3 or Azure blog. So these are some of the advanced topics like task scheduling or handling the asynchronous events. Let's say you are doing a user sign up and you wanted to asynchronously invite the uh, send an invitation email. So how we can do it? We can use an SCS uh, events. Uh, we can also schedule a task like a cron job uh, on a particular duration. If your application is 24 seven running on the server, that's not possible with the lambdas. And then uh, we already talked about the database, uh, MongoDB, Postgres and all. And all these, these are the topics which you can see on the left panel. So in this uh, topic, we are talking about the cache manager. So caching is just like a, a simple example of uh, whenever you are, you are requesting some data. And if you are able to return the data from the memory or from the Redis, that is caching. Caching means uh, you don't need to every time relies on the data source you can just cache the data and then you can just fetch the data from the cache so it's like intermediate store you will put uh, between your apis and your database so there are two type of caching in memory caching where you will just put the, the data in the in memory and return the data from the memory only like where there is a no scope of the database but let's say i have a apis and there is a database mongodb or postgres then i can just use this cache provider so if the data is not there, then I will just fetch it from the database and put it in the cache. So my second request will always fetch it from the cache until unless that data cache expire. So I'm using here this cache module. So we can just register cache module dot register. And in this example, I'm using MongoDB, but this is how you will use the cache module. So in the cache module, you can uh, provide the provider because cache module is just allowing you some kind of a caching mechanism but who is going to store the data that's a cache provider so that can be the, your uh, in, uh, redis so we will have a redis container and we will be using the redis to store the data so in the redis you can have a key value pair key as a keys so this is a cache manager you will add and then you will initialize that in the root module that we are doing here cache module and the cache module dot register and uh, we have these controllers at the controller level you can provide these unique keys because this is purely in memory caching because we are not using any provider here you need to use the cache interceptor and you can just provide a cache key and cache ttl so because this uh, nest.js application is running on server that's up and running 24 7 so this will cache the response in the using this cache key and whenever the new request is coming for this particular api this is going to return the data from the cache so it's like a first example is purely in memory based uh, caching here nest.js internally stores this data inside a memory so whatever the response that api is returning it will put that in the in memory cache for that particular duration with the caching keys so there is a cache key we are using right so this is the contact so first time it is getting it from the whatever your memory data, memory data source or wherever second time it is getting this data from the cache because there is an in memory cache enabled and till the particular ttl this data is available okay now you can fetch that and here we need to just remove this and we are getting the updated one right so this is how in memory cache works it's like a, whenever you are hitting a frequent apis you can just enable this now next thing is because this is a simple cache you can just use interceptor that will intercept the response intercept the request and it will check that okay it the data is available in the cache it will return it so you need to use this cache interceptor cache key and cache ttl these are the three things now another thing is the cache store because i don't want it to use memory for the cache store so what i can i use i can use the redis because if you are not passing the store then the by default the store is memory in the cache module dot register otherwise 
you can specify the argument in the cache module dot register and specify the store as a redis so i will install the redis in my application so this is nestjs cache and i will install the module and here inside a cache module dot register i will specify the options to enable the redis for the caching so register async and i will be getting the the redis host and port from the config service so you can just simply do a register otherwise you can also use register async where you can get the host and port dynamically from the config service and here i will just add redis okay i'm adding it on the wrong directory it should be in the nest js cache 11th folder and pnpm add so redis client options redis store and then so we need to have a redis up and running on that host and port so i already have a docker compose updated with the the redis so when you do docker compose up we will have this uh, redis up and running so this is 4.6.7 i will update this to 3.0.0 so i will just check uh, okay this is the redis and i will try to get the stable version of it which uh, is compatible 3.1.2 and i will just do pnpm install because it, it's all about compatibility if uh, nest js version 9 is not compatible with that then it will throw an error right there is some typing error or something now it is satisfying the the compatibility with the nest js this redis and uh, we already have this uh, docker compose this container running so we have started the application and i think there is an additional code so okay now it's up and running uh, we will just start we will just hit our endpoints now we have provided the store so we don't need to change anywhere in the code we have provided a cache ttl cache cache interceptor that's going to be the same here we just changed our uh, keys so now all this data is coming from the keys i mean we can just inspect the redis attach shell and we can just try to see uh, so redis cli that will give you all the keys so here you can actually access the redis and there also you can inspect okay those particular keys are available there or not 